let's talk fonts. Oftentimes the stock fonts in Windows aren't that interesting and are super boring to look at and you want to add some new ones. So today let's talk about how easy it is to get some new fonts, where to get them from and how to install them and import them in to whatever software you want them on. All right, first, before we do anything, we need a font. So personally, I use a few different websites and something to be aware of is that some fonts are free and if they are, then there may be some extra bits attached to it just to be aware of and I'll show you what they mean. Other ones do range in price. So depending on what you want, what you're looking for, how much you're willing to spend, make sure you choose the right one for you. So the two sites that I generally use are Google Fonts, which is pretty standard these days, and also the font, which I've been using for years and I love it. But especially in this one, there is something that I'll show you in a second. So I've heard about a great font that people use called Poppins. So let's just search for that. Right, here we go. Search straight for it, Poppins. We've got it right here. So I know on Google Fonts, all you have to do is download the family. But what you can do is download specific styles of that font as well, which you can see here. But basically, I'm just going to download the whole family. So once you hit download, it'll ask you on where to save it. And it will save as a zip file as well. So if we just hit save. Now, what we will need to do is find where we saved it, which is here. Now, instead of having to extract this, what you can actually do is simply double click into the file and you've got all your fonts right there. Now, there's a couple ways you can actually install this. You could go into each one, double click it and literally just hit install. Now, if I show you here, I've got Affinity Designer up. And if we create a new text box and type something in, we go down to the drop down box for the fonts. And if we go to where Poppins would be, which if I know my alphabet, it should be around here somewhere, you'll see it's not there. So we've got Playball, some other ones that I probably can't pronounce. And you can see it's, it's not there at all. We head over to Install. So we're going to install Poppins Black. Hit Install and you'll see it'll be greyed out. We can now close this box. Now with most softwares, you do need to restart it. So having just done that, we can recreate our text. Not sure why it's that font. But now if we scroll down, we can find Poppins and we literally have it right there. And we can resize this, do what we want. Now, if we do want, we can actually install all of these, but I'll show you a different way that you can install these ones. If we head down to the search function within Windows and simply type in fonts, you'll come to these font settings, which if you open them, you will literally have all the fonts that you have installed. Now, what you can do, and if we're going to do it this way, we do have to extract them from the zip file. Whereas if we install it straight from each individual file, then we don't have to do that. It saves a tiny bit of space. But if you've got thousands of fonts, it, it saves quite a lot. But all we need to do is with the files that we have, we simply grab one and drag it at the top of the page of the fonts page. You've got a drag and drop to install section. You literally drag and drop and you can actually see popping turned up there. We can do another one. I think you can do multiple. You'll see we've got three font faces now because each one is going to be grouped together within the font family. And then if we drag another one in, you'll see it creates four and then so on and so on. So that's two ways you can actually install them. What's good with this is that all your fonts are actually uninstallable as well. So if you've got a font that you don't like, that you don't use, that you think is just a waste of space, all you do is on here, click it and you've got the uninstall option that you can uninstall the font if you really don't want it anymore. Bye bye Ariel. Now with these fonts, it is important to know that there is a license to them as well. So if we click on the license on Google fonts, it'll take us all the way down and it says you can use them freely in your products and projects, print or digital, commercial or otherwise, meaning we are free to use this font on whatever we make, wherever it is, if we sell it or don't sell it or whatever, that font is fine for us to use. However, when you come over to something like the font, so we've got free for personal use here. So if we click into this font, you can see that it does say that this font is for personal use only and to use it in something where it's going to be sold for commercial use, then you do have to purchase it and visit that place to purchase the actual font. Whereas a few of these which are on the font are actually 100% free as well. We also have donationware as well, where you donate a certain amount to the creator of the font. And they give you the font basically, but you can actually search for 100% free or specifically free for personal use if that's all you're using. I often search for the 100% free versions. 
And you can see on the side here, it says 100% free, which means it can be used on personal projects as well as things that are going to be sold as well. And you can get a good range of fonts within this. And what's actually good with, I know the font is you can type something in. So let's say if we wanted to kind of preview what we were going to write with this font anyway, to get a good idea of what it looks like, we can type in the top and it will show you every font with that writing quite like this one. I'm not going to lie. 100% free. Why don't I have this already? But yeah, it can give you an idea. I think Google Fonts does a similar thing, which is here actually. A bit more stylish on Google. We can increase the size as well if we need to. Yeah, so it's a good idea to preview what you're getting before you actually get it to make it a little bit easier. There you go. Now roam free with the knowledge that you have to get unlimited fonts. Just make sure they're the right license for what you're using it for. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you drop it a like, hit subscribe if you're new. If you know of any great fonts, especially if they're free, drop them in the comments below because you can never have too many fonts. As always, if you want to follow me on any of the socials, they're in the description below. And I'll link the Poppins font that I've got just now in the description as well, just to make it easier to find if you want that one, if it looks nice to you. But as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Fonts, fonts, fonts. So many fonts. She can't have enough fonts. It's like a font fiend. It's a serious problem.